Uh, we've got this uh, absurd situation of having gas shortages in a state sitting on hundreds of years of gas reserves. Yeah, I mean, the government's driving us into the dark. We've, we've had successive governments institute these policies that have uh, restricted the amount of technologies that are energy technologies that are available to us, like nuclear technology, like uh, coal seam gas, these other technologies. And now we're in a situation where the government's complaining that we've got gas shortages. <laughs> it, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, we need to keep the lights on. We do, and the Victorian government has approved its first gas extraction project in a decade on the Great Ocean Road. Uh, how do they explain this decision when they are treating gas like the great enemy? It's just so contradictory and incoherent, their policy position. It's not as contradictory as what it first appears. Like, when they're doing the gas bans in the houses, mm. my, my opinion is that they're actually doing that to restrict consumption because they, they're worried about shortages. That's why they're approving this. There is no uh, high-capacity renewables that will happen without gas backup. They need the gas backup both for industry and for power. Uh, realities come, to, come home to them. Now, another major medical body, the American College of Pediatricians, has called for an immediate end to dangerous so-called gender-affirming operations and treatment for minors. This follows the CAS review. We've had all sorts of U-turns in this area in Europe, throughout Scandinavia. When are we going to see something happen in Australia, at least an investigation of what's happening and whether it's the, the, the right uh, set of uh, procedures in place for gender-confused kids. Yeah, we've had uh, many of these reviews now, like, like the CAS review, and many countries now have been uh, doing a U-turn, as you say, um, many in Europe, also states in the, in the United States. But Australia just seems to be putting its head in the sand. Uh, there was a response from the health minister from the Victorian government just recently in a response to a petition on this topic. Mm. And they basically said, oh, everything's going fine. Uh, they even talked about the cash review as, you know, increasing disinformation. What? Uh, yeah, our governments, like, they've been captured by these <laughs> activists. They have to face reality that uh, what's happening is being questioned and we need to look at it much more seriously and stop giving... Stop looking at this medicine as uh, something that, you know, isn't serious. It's very serious what they're doing here. And the interesting thing about what they said in the, in the US was they were also referring to social transitioning, which is not medically involved, but it's also, as was pointed out in the cash review, is a serious uh, active intervention that uh, needs to be considered carefully. And in Victoria, we don't do that. We don't. And, and to dismiss the CAS review as disinformation, this was a review that took years. This is someone who is not in any way political or ideologically driven, who was just looking at the evidence of what was happening and the <coughs> outcomes. And uh, I just wonder when we're going to have the coalition, the, the state Liberals, make a, make a stand on this issue because they seem to be right there with Labor promoting the, the complete extremes of this movement? Look, I think, as we're seeing, it's like a house of cards that's falling at the moment. Uh, sooner or later, everyone has to face state. reality. Not in this state. It's rock solid in this state. Well, I'm doing my best. To, <laughs> I'm doing my best to push back against it. And, look, I think more and more people are coming around to that position. Uh, I, You know, if you talk to average mums and dads at home and tell them who are don't know about this stuff, you talk, tell them about what's going on, they reject it, right? They, they don't want to have this public debate. No-one wants to have this public debate because they know that they'll lose. Yeah, you're so right, and I think this is part of the problem because the Libs are just so terrified of getting a backlash from the activists, from the media. They say, well, this isn't a top issue. Of course it's not a top issue, and many uh, mums and dads don't even know about it. It's your job to actually tell them what's happening at schools and hospitals. Uh, David Limbrick, thank you so much.